whether Pike knows that he's gay or not, I'm not sure. For me, this it, it's the story for me is about Henry and Pike awakening. And I think part of Pike's awakening is awakening to the possibility of sexuality. Sorry. Pike is an angel in this, and that would overcome any racial boundaries or any sexual orientation sort of boundaries. He's an angel, if anything, and if for any other reason, that's why they protect him. That's why they're overprotective, because they don't want people messing with such a gem of a person. Henry. It's Grace. It's my favorite character in the movie is the character of Grace. And she was a rooting force for the character of Henry. Listen, you know what they say when you get lost in the woods? If you stay put, stay in one place, and don't wander, they'll find you. And I was just hoping you'd let yourself be found this time. Playing Grace was slightly difficult because she's so nice and she's so ordinary. The only thing that made her out of the ordinary was the fact that she could sing. So that was a gift. Take me in. Grace Quirley, early on in the film, has some intention of, of, of setting up Henry and Pike. Um, but I wouldn't say that she's so much a matchmaker as she is a kind of angelic presence. I'm going to ask you to do me a favor, Pike. You have to run the middle. You go and pick up the dinners from Widow Thayer, and then you deliver them to Sam and Henry, uh, all right? I, I don't think I could. I live right by Widow Thayer, so I'll be glad to go by and pick them up. I want nope. Pike to do this for me. Relax, you'll be fine. We all have people in our lives that we, you know, we think, oh, if he can only get over that one thing, you know, he'll be all right. Or you intuit things. And I think she's very um, intuitive. Now, Henry, how did you like that chicken last night? Oh, the chicken was delicious, oh. Mrs. Thayer. Thank you so much for going all the trouble. Oh, it was no trouble at all. I had some extra left over. I always make too much. I'm still cooking for six, so it's just me yeah, now. What I like about the widow there is she is she's so well-intentioned and has the courage of her convictions and it is remarkably non-judgmental. Beans all right? Beans, I... Yes, they seemed a little plain, but I ain't going to salt them if I'm told not to salt them. They just don't taste right to me, however. But to each his own, I always say. <laughs> Which brings me to my, my next point, Henry. Her goal in life is really to bring people together. Now, she is not judgmental about this. I mean, I don't think she sits in a room and says, oh, this man likes another man. This woman likes another woman. I don't think... She could verbalize about it. But I think none of that means anything to her. The main thing is to get people together. Mrs. Thayer. Yes? Uh, Jack and I are heading over to pick up Bob and Spencer. They're good. bringing the desserts. Good, good. And Hi. And then uh, Todd and Mitchell are coming up from Polson. They're bringing sandwiches. Good. Are... Oh, you know, Henry, it is my pleasure to introduce friends. Oh! Mrs. Thayer, are you all right? What are you oh. doing here? Oh, I'm so sorry, Henry. What's heartbreaking to me about the scene where the widow returns the plate at the end to Henry is that she's so upset about breaking this confidence that she has with Pike, that she's, in order to see him happy, she needs to tell the truth to Henry. This plate doesn't belong to me. Oh, that's, that's so old. Is it any good? It is unbelievable. Who makes tarts out here anyway? Oh, uh, um, that's the widow Thayer. She made that. You're saying she made this? Right. She's the one who's been doing all the cooking. A woman did not make this. What is that supposed to mean? Nothing. I don't mean anything by it. I'm just saying a woman didn't make this. The thing that Tom and I love to joke about the most is the uh, the line that gets the biggest laugh, absolutely, in the film, which is when Vianne says, you know, a woman didn't make this. 
I said to Tom, you know, as I love to give my opinion about the script, and I said, to, you know, well, Tom, what is this line? This line does not make any sense to me. He said, no, 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 it'll play, it'll play. And I said, okay, I, okay, it'll play, but I have no idea what it means. And uh, to Tom's credit, it absolutely gets the biggest laugh every time. Maybe this means you can finally tell Sam you're gay. Put some of that therapy to use. The character of Mary Mart, I think, has the advantage of being a little bit the outsider of the situation, and so can address fairly directly the issue, the elephant in the middle of the room. She's a truth teller. She, she says to Henry, you're gay. She says, um, she reminds him of that on occasion throughout the film. She says, Dean straight. And she pretty much says it just like that. I mean, there's no beating around the bush. There's no softening around the edges. So you're going to make me ask about the Indian? I have to hear about it from the mayor. Well, it doesn't matter now. It doesn't matter like the Whitney Biennial didn't matter? Or it doesn't matter like Dean didn't matter? Or it doesn't... Well, just drop it, all right? I think people find it funny because it's a little bit of a relief that she, you know, comes into town and in two seconds has figured out the situation and calls it. I don't know what your plans are. What are your intentions? My intentions? Hmm. People are starting to count on you. In terms of Sam, the grandfather being uh, being fairly direct in addressing some issues with Henry, I, I think for me, Sam is a, sort of the iconographic image of the grandfather. What's interesting to me about the scene on the couch is that while he's drawing Henry out, he really doesn't demand that Henry tell him, and he, but he lets Henry know that he knows. Why can't you see how much love there is that people just want to pour on top of you? I can't help thinking that your grandma and I didn't do right by you somehow. Sam, but don't say that. Well, I feel like maybe we taught you something wrong because you won't tell me who you are. Well, that scene on the couch, that's the essence of the role, of the old man's role, certainly. And I think it's the heart of the picture, frankly. It's about understanding and loving and accepting each other. And that's what life should be about. Did we teach you shame? Did I teach you that? No. Because it would break my heart if I had. Can't you see what a good job God did here? Hmm? <laughs> Can't you see how beautiful it made you? If he can draw him out, it's not for Sam. Sam knows Henry better than Henry knows Henry. It's for Henry's sake, I believe, that Sam reaches out to him. He wants Henry to come out and say, this is me. This, he wants Henry to reveal himself because that, of course, is, is an act of love. How do you let somebody love you um, if you can't show them who you are? I never told him, Grace. I know. I never told him. Well, he knows now. The scene with Grace and Henry after Sam dies, where uh, Henry's saying, I never told him, and it, it's, be, it's become apparent to him that he's going to have to live the rest of his life, um, knowing that he didn't finally come out to his grandfather is, is sort of a, it's a caution again to come out now life is quick and you don't know what can happen and and come by come out I really mean to be known to let the people who are near you that love you know who you are let's people dream especially people who are gay who are you know whether they're Indian or white or, or black or Chinese or whatever that 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 impressed me pretty much if wishes were horses